This is my Mac Mini M4 base model. It comes with only 256 gigabytes of storage, and in 2025, you can imagine it's pretty easy to run out of space. So today, we're gonna to install one of these in my Mac Mini M4. This is a one terabyte storage upgrade for the Mac Mini M4. Now, the Mac Mini M4 is not officially upgradable by Apple or uh, with an Apple product, so this is a third party upgrade storage for the Mac Mini M4. There are plenty of videos online on how to upgrade the storage of the Mac Mini M4. On this video, I'm gonna focus on a couple of things. Besides sharing with you the whole experience, I think I'm gonna focus on sharing with you my opening experience of the Mac Mini M4. I had a look online and, well, I found many, many ways to open the Mac Mini M4, including some which ended up with some catastrophic results, which I'm hoping not to replicate on this video. So hopefully I'm going to be able to uh, safely open the Mac Mini M4 and I'm gonna share with you my process step by step. Then I think I'm going to focus on this product. Now officially the Mac Mini M4 is not upgradable, but the storage happens to live on a little removable board like this. People call it the SSD, it's not really an SSD, it's just a, a NAND module. There's no logic in it, I think there's some voltage regulation and just the NAND storage ICs on it, nothing else. So obviously after the release of the Mac Mini M4, quite a few players started replicating the PCB and we ended up with the latest and greatest PCB which is 10 layers and promises to be an exact replica of the Apple PCB. Now there are a few reputable suppliers online where you can buy these upgrades, but you know me, I decided to go with AliExpress and I had a good look online and I think I might, I might have found a reputable AliExpress supplier uh, selling a reputable product, this JCID product. So on this video we're gonna benchmark the original Apple SSD before we remove it. We are going to open the Mac Mini M4, swap the SSD, reinstall macOS on this one terabyte upgrade SSD and then we are going to retest, re-benchmark this uh, new module into the Mac Mini. However, I'm reading online quite a few comments of reliability issues with these modules. Some modules fail straight away, some modules don't perform straight away, but some of the modules apparently they fail after a few months or they start underperforming after a few months. So I'm gonna be the guinea pig for you guys and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep testing this SSD over the next few months and you will find an update down below in the description or more likely into the first pinned comment and hopefully this is gonna work. If it's not gonna work, you'll find my feedback down below in the comment section. And of course, by the end of the video, I'm gonna share with you where I purchased this module. So if everything goes well, well, maybe you can go and buy one yourself. If something goes wrong, well, maybe you can just make sure that you're not buying from that supplier. First thing I wanna do is to see what I purchased. Uh, let's have a look at the product. This is a one terabyte update, it's made by JCID, and apparently this is a reputable product, assuming it's a genuine JCID product. And on the side of the box, there is an authenticity sticker. It says, scrape the coding, check the authenticity. And we are definitely gonna do that right now. And this is the SSD, at least, uh, again, it's not really an SSD, but I keep calling it an SSD. Uh, not much to see, it's really, really small. I thought it was a bit bigger. Uh, this is one side and this is the other side. We have two NAND modules. Each one of them is 512 gigabytes. And again, the total should be one terabyte for the whole module. There's a little JCID certificate in the box and there's also a little stamp uh, which looks to be genuine. So yeah, hopefully this is telling something about the quality of the product. We will find very soon, I guess. Let's check the authenticity of the product. Let's uh, scrape the coding and check online. And it took me absolutely forever to install the software, update the software, login in the software, and I couldn't find any place where to check this code until I disabled this panel here by tapping this button and suddenly I have this anti-counterfeiting query which is where I can tap the code. So let's check real quick. It's in Chinese, but it more or less says that the code is authentic. And if I check it again, it tells me that the code has been checked before. 
and he also provides a date and time of when it was checked for the first time. Nice system. Well, the code is valid and wasn't checked before, so this should tell me that the product is a genuine JCID one. Now let's move on to the next step, which is to check the performance of the original Apple SSD inside my Mac Mini. It's kind of pointless to run performance checks with only 12% of free space on the SSD, particularly on a 256GB model where this equals to only 30GB. SSDs will slow down when they're full and macOS starts throwing toys out of the pram when I reach about 92% capacity. Since I had to migrate everything on the new SSD anyways, I decided to take a backup and wipe the SSD before running the tests. It's a simple built-in process, right? System settings, transfer or reset, erase all content and settings. I grabbed a cup of tea and when I came back, the Mac Mini was dead. Yes, the process somehow failed and after multiple reboots, the Mac Mini was unable to continue and showed the orange SOS in Morse code. Which means buy a new Mac Mini. <laughs> Considering this is a stock system with Apple hardware, I was disappointed and a bit concerned. If the Apple SSD fails to perform such a simple task like that, what is going to happen with a third-party module? Anyways, my Mac Mini is now a brick. How to fix it? Two choices. Number one, take it to an Apple store. This unit is still under warranty, but I understand that these kind of issues are usually fixed for free. Number two, find a new friend with an Apple computer. Thankfully, I have such a friend, so the first task is to revive the Mac Mini. I'm using Configurator 2 on a working MacBook Pro with an M1 CPU, and I have downloaded a Sequoia IPSW installation file, as I don't want the process to install the latest version of macOS, which happened to be Tahoe 26.0 at the time of shooting. Once the Mac Mini is placed into recovery mode by plugging it in while holding the on button, the MacBook recognizes the Mac Mini in DFU mode, device firmware update, and all I have to do is to drag and drop the IPSW file on it. I choose Revive, hoping for a faster outcome. Surprisingly, the process is immediately successful and after about 15 minutes, the Mac Mini is back up and running. Though it somehow complains about the connected keyboard, but in the end it let me in. The fail reset process had managed to wipe the drive, so I can move to the next step. Once on the desktop, I download and run the benchmarking software, save the outcome, and then it's time for the open heart surgery. I watched a few videos about swapping the SSD on the Mac Mini M4. I never got a clear understanding on how the bottom cover is held in place, so I went ahead with my best guess. Which turned out to be completely wrong, so let's start from the ending. Yes, I successfully removed the cover without damage, but to share with you the best opening technique, I'll have to first show you how the cover is held in place. I incorrectly believed that the cover was attached to the aluminium case by those plastic bits. I thought they were the usual super fragile plastic clips and that all I had to do was to apply an inward pressure to release them. But no, the cover is attached to the inner metal cover using these metal posts which are sliding into these holes where are kept in place by those metal springs you see inside. So, in order to open the back cover, you don't want to apply an inward pressure, but you want to pull outwards, which is tricky because the plastic is soft and can break. Now, this is my own Mac Mini. Apple didn't send it for free, and my channels are small. If this video makes £20, which are about $26, I'll consider myself lucky. So forgive me if I'm not going to close the lid and try again to show you the process. And by the way, feel free to support me on Patreon or on Buy Me A Coffee. As a minimum, if you're still watching, I'd really appreciate a thumb up. Thank you so much for your support. So let me show you how I did it and how I would have done it if I had known how it is attached. The first step is to slide the prime tool between the plastic cover and the chassis. I've purchased these guitar picks, which are made of nylon, so they're sturdy, but flexible. The tools enclosed with the SSD, which are often available for purchase, can be useful, but I do recommend something thinner and made of plastic to avoid damages. You want to begin from the opposite corner where the on button is located, as there is a wire there. I fiddled with the pick for quite some time, but I wasn't able to gain access. I also discovered that there is a secondary inner layer in front of the aluminium case, and the pick can get stuck in there. Then I realized that the best way to get in is to use a plastic tool to slightly lift the plastic cover and slide the plastic pick into the small gap which immediately opens yes. up. 
In oh. fact, I suspect that pulling the cover by the openings might be the best way to release the clips. I have a feeling that that might be the official Apple process. Once you have gained access, the goal is to pull up okay. those posts. I didn't know when I opened my Mac Mini, so I kept pushing away from the aluminium case, trying to release plastic clips, which were in there. Thankfully, the first clip popped out very easily, the following two with some extra efforts. Oh, I see. Oh, well. Only then did I realize how the cover was actually held in place. And to release the last clip, which was particularly stubborn, I used this long painter knife, which was a mistake because it's made of metal and left some scratches on the inner cover. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Once again, bear in mind that there is a wire close to the on button in the corner, so you want to be particularly careful. The final clip popped out eventually with no damage, but if I had to do this again, I would try using a long and flat plastic prying tool instead. This could be slid under the cover, close to the clips, and then twisted to apply an outward pressure directly at the posts themselves. In any case, we are in, and I will leave all the wires attached because those connectors are very fragile. There are now eight identical screws to remove to gain access to the next level. This intermediate cover is housing the Wi-Fi aerials and the battery, so be careful when removing it, as there will be more cables in the way. Further in, there are four more screws of different size this time. Remove them to be able to temporarily remove the fan, which is also attached to a flat cable. Finally, the SSD. Here you are. One screw holds it in place, and it's very tight. The SSD has an extra ground strip in front of the connector, and unplugging the module requires a little extra wiggling. It's stiffer than a standard SSD. Here you can see the 250GB and 1TB SSD modules side by side. They look identical indeed. The 1TB SSD goes in, and again it requires a little extra wiggling to properly sit it in its socket. You can squeeze the SSD socket with your index finger to apply more pressure. Once the SSD is in, I give the Mac Mini a little clean. This system has been extensively used for about 9 months. Yes, sorry MacBook friend for the dust. Everything goes back in in the opposite order, make sure to put the right screws back where they belong of course. At this stage I don't want to close the back cover in case something goes wrong and I have to get back in again. So I leave it ajar and I put the Mac Mini back into DFU mode. Configurator is back up and running and the Mac Mini is being recognized. At first, Configurator refused to see the Mac Mini in DFU mode. It said it was booted, but I think it was from the previous task and I reboot Yay. just fixed that. After that, the process was surprisingly very smooth. I dragged and dropped the same IPSW file on the Mac Mini, selected Restore, and 15 minutes later I was once again fighting with macOS trying to have my keyboard recognized. Once in macOS, it was time to run some benchmarks. As expected, the new SSD has brought a consistent increase in speed. Amorphos Disk Mark IV shows a large writing speed improvement from 2.1 GB per second to 3.1 GB per second. The random high Q depth test is more than double the speed, while the random low Q depth test, which represents the average use from the OS perspective, is basically unchanged. Blackmagic Design Speed Test also shows some nice improvements, mostly in the write department. I then wanted to make sure the SSD was actually 1TB in size. This is in case the NAND modules are actually smaller than 1TB and somehow the OS is being fooled into believing that a larger size is available. When that happens, the OS will start overwriting existing data once the actual capacity has been reached. Windows has a dedicated app to test the real capacity of a drive. I'm not aware of one for macOS, so I instead copied about 850GB of old videos on the SSD. I then played each one of those videos and I had no errors, so I think I can safely assume that the 1TB SSD is not fake. While copying the videos, I noticed that the transfer speed was decreasing to about one third of the maximum speed after about 350GB of data had been transferred. 
A slowdown during loan transfers is expected on any SSD when the SLC cache is depleted. TLC NAND memory is much slower. I also noticed that the drive was reaching 60 plus degrees when riding, and to rule out speed throttling due to overheating, I ran the test again, this time with the fan forced to maximum speed, and the outcome was the same even with the SSD reading only 45 degrees Celsius. By the way, please take these results with a pinch of salt, as in theory I should allow the SSD to do garbage collection in between tests. That is the process of actually deleting the files and getting the NAND memory ready for writing. This would normally happen automatically when the system is idle, but there is no feedback of if and when this happens. And it looks like macOS doesn't have a way to force this process, and waiting 8 hours on the recovery screen was not on my schedule, sorry. It's been a week and I've been running my Mac Mini with the lid ajar, uh, just in case, and, um, well, everything has been working totally fine. I ran those benchmarks again and the results are consistent, so no issues whatsoever. By the way, it seems that the lid of the Mac Mini M4 has a critical role in cooling the Mac Mini itself. It seems that with the lid ajar on top of the case here, the hot air, the exhausted hot air, can find its way back to the uh, inlet where the fresh air is supposed to come in. So bear that in mind, especially if you plan to run the Mac Mini with heavy loads with the lid removed or not fully connected. Now, before I close the lid, I've been thinking of a couple of tweaks in case I wanted to go back in uh, to clean the fan, for example. One would be to try and squeeze those clips uh, to make them a bit less stiff, um, so to facilitate the opening of the lid. But that probably should have been done when the inner cover was removed. I don't think it's simpler to do it this way. What I'm going to do on this occasion is to use this. This is the Super Lube. It's a PTFE synthetic grease. And I'm going to apply a tiny little amount on those metal posts. This is plastic safe, just in case, and again, I'm not going to apply a stupid amount, just a little bit to make a potential future removal a bit simpler. I will keep testing the Mac Mini over the next few months, and if I encountered any issues, I will make sure to uh, update the uh, pinned comment down below in the comment section uh, with my findings. So if there's anything that happens, touch wood, it's not going to happen, well, you'll find my feedback down below in the comment section. And since you're there, if you leave a comment, I would really appreciate it. I love when my videos create engagement. Now, I've imagined some of you might have jumped to this chapter, which is where I'm going to reveal where I purchased these uh, SSD for the Mac Mini M4. Let me say this again, this is not a sponsored video, so you won't find an affiliated link down below in the description. I'm not getting anything from this video. I purchased these SSD with my own money. But in case you wanted to uh, try one of these yourself, I purchased these from AliExpress from a store called Tempered Store. So if you decide to purchase from the store, please do leave a comment down below with your experience. Is it going to be positive? Is it going to be negative? I'd love to know. And again, I will update my own comment uh, with uh, my finding with this SSD, whether they're positive or negative. Now, one thing I've noticed about this manufacturer, JCID, it says here at the back, it's JC Intelligent Accessories Trading, and it turns out that JCID and iShun are related. And if you follow my channel, I have reviews that iShun soldering station, it used to be quite a popular one, which I really didn't like. Uh, my tests didn't go very well, and most importantly, the customer service with iShun didn't really go very well. They really didn't do anything to fix my problem. So, what can I say? I don't know. Again, this is not a sponsored video. I cannot really guarantee about anything about this. I'm just hoping that this is going to work for me. And if you decide to go with a similar unit or from the same store, I really hope that it works for you too. 
So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, as usual, I'd appreciate a thumb up down below and consider subscribing to this channel and my main channel if you like this kind of things. Don't forget I'm on Facebook and on Patreon. There is a free tier on Patreon, so no excuses. And the link is down below in the description. But if you don't want to support me on Patreon, maybe you can buy me a coffee. And the link is also down below in the description. If you don't want to buy me a coffee, well, I hope you enjoyed the video. That's it for today. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon here on my channels for my next videos. Thank you very much and goodbye. Bye-bye.